Hi, and thank you so much for working out with me today. We're going through a reformer workout. You will need your Pilates box. You will also need your ring of fire. I want you to start with your foot bar up. I want you to start with one medium spring. For me, that's a blue spring. We're gonna lay down on the box and get started. Put your feet on the headrest and then scoot kind of back on the box so that when you lay down, your head, kind of where your ponytail would be, is going to be onto the foot bar. And I'm just gonna make sure that my head is nice and supported on the foot bar. I'm gonna reach my arms up to the ceiling, holding that ring, and then bring the legs into tabletop, squeezing the knees together. Now, before we even move, I want you to focus on really the whole purpose of the ring here. And the purpose of the ring is to help you connect to your lats, which are those long muscles that are in the back of the body, and to help you connect to your rib cage and your, your torso. So take a big, deep inhale. You're in a nice, neutral position. And then as you exhale, go into a little imprint, which means you let your low back press gently against the box, and you start to push mainly through those pinky finger side of the hands into the ring and find that connection. I really feel my back starting to work when I do that. And then release it, go back to neutral and release your ring. Doing that several more times, you do a little imprint, letting your low back gently press against the mat and pushing into the pinky finger side of your hand. And then back to neutral. This is one of those things which is why they call it the ring of fire because the fire is going to start to build pretty quickly in your body, which is what we want. We wanna build that heat up and warm everything up. Big exhale through pierced lips, pulling that navel in deep, imprinting the spine, squeezing through those lats, and then release. Let's do two more. Exhale as you do your imprint, push into the pinky finger side, pull the abdominals in, feel that corset, and then release. This will be your last one. From neutral, you're coming into that little imprint, gently pressing the back into the box, and then back to regular position. Neutral. Take your right leg and reach it long and low, and then switch it with your left. Just work at a tempo that feels comfortable for you. One leg in, is reaching out, and the other leg is reaching in. If you start to go too low, you might start popping through the ribs and arching your back. You want to stay away from that. You want to stay at a position where you can keep that neutral pelvis as you extend one leg and then the other leg. Keep activating your lats by gently pressing into the ring. Now notice my elbows have a little bend in it and the eyes of my elbows are facing back to the sides of the room. So it's almost like I'm holding a little beach ball. Elbows just slightly bent out to the sides. One more right and left and then bring your legs into tabletop. Now take both of your legs and reach them long. Both of the, your legs will come right back in. Big extension through the legs, and then pull them back in. Whatever breath pattern works for you, I like to inhale as I go out, and exhale as I drag those legs through molasses. As with Pilates, it's really about the quality of the motion, the intention that you're putting behind your motions. So with everything, we want to move with control, with precision. One more time like that, out and in. Good. Now take your ring and place it on both of your knees. Take your hands and place them on the other pad. My pinky finger side of the forearm is on the pad. Now my hands, are, I'm pretty broad in my shoulders, so I'm going to go on the outside of the pad and come to kind of a prayer position, interlacing my fingers. One pad is on above the knees, right on the thighs. The other pad is on the forearms. Back to that imprint that we did in the very beginning. Take an inhale, and then as you exhale, you'll pull the knees towards you, push your hands, forearms into the ring, and make your ring an oval. Holding there, you're knitting your ribs, you're pulling your abdominals in, you're gently pressing your low back into the mat, and then go right back out to neutral position. Again, big exhale as you scoop and pull in. Relax your shoulders. Feel those lats right in the armpit and gauge. And then back to neutral. And if your abs were not warming up before this, here it is. Good. Last few here. Exhale as you squeeze, making that ring an oval. 
and inhale it back to neutral. Two more here, knitting the ribs, pulling the abdominals in, feel that corset engage, find that hold, I'm shaking, and then back to neutral. One more, I love these exercises that don't look like much, but feel like everything. Give me little pulses, one inch in, one inch out. Pulsing not only the knees, but also the arms. You pulse everything together and release. Everything together and release. We're going for four and three and two. One more, release the ring, give yourself a hug. We're not done yet. One more abdominal series to go. Take the ring now only on your right thigh and only on the pinky finger side of the right arm. You're going to squeeze that ring with the right side of your body. Your left leg's going to tap down like you're touching the headrest. Squeeze the ring and pull it back up. Tap that toe down. Squeeze the ring as you lift the left leg up. It doesn't have to be a big leg, a big leg motion. I'm tapping my headrest, but you might move the leg an inch. And if that doesn't feel good, you can extend the leg out. That might feel a little bit easier on the back. So instead of tapping the toe down, you just reach the toe to the wall in front of you. This is all about your right oblique. Feeling that connection. Last two. And one more. One side to go, one side done. Take the ring on the left thigh and the left pinky finger side of the forearm. Hold it nice and tight, connect to that side body. Right leg's gonna tap down and back up. Or if that tapping is just too much challenge, take the leg and just extend it out and back in. You can also just keep that leg in tabletop and just squeeze the ring and release the ring. A lot of variations. Your job as always is to pick the variation that works for you today. Every day is different. Last three, and two, and one. Good, pull the knees into the chest, and now I will say the most challenging part of this is getting up, because we are on a light spring. You can roll to the side, or you can use your hands behind your hamstrings and roll all the way up to seated. You wanna end with your feet on the headrest, pick up your straps, and keep the ring. We're using that ring a lot today. You're gonna bend your elbows, holding that ring right out in front of you like a steering wheel. Sit really tall first, reaching down through the sitting bones and up through the crown of the head. Exhale as you scoop your abdominals in and start to roll yourself back. When you've gone as far back as you can, you're going to hold. Your chin stays gently to the chest. Push the arms over the head. Bend the arms and roll yourself back up. Do you see my feet lift? <laughs> I kind of went a little bit too zealous. You're going to tuck your tailbone, scoop and roll. Go back as far as comfortable for you. Keep your feet grounded. Push the arms over the head. Bend the arms back and then roll it right back up. Let's do that several more times. Tuck and scoop. You're scooping through the low abdominals, keeping the chest broad. Nice, taking your time to articulate the spine to roll back. Big press with the arms over the head. If this press with the arms over the head is just not working for you, you can just do the roll back and then just hold. While everyone is pushing, you're just holding and then you're rolling back up. I want you to do two more times. You're rolling down, either holding or reaching over the head, and then rolling back up. One more time here, rolling down, holding or punching over the head, and then rolling back up. Now let's roll down and hold it. Take it down, scoop, and hold. Turn your torso to the right slightly, back to the center. Turn your torso to the left slightly, back to the center. This is all about your rib cage rotating from side to side. Good, I'm really definitely squeezing my knees together. I'm scooped through my low abdominals, but I'm broad through my shoulders and lifted through my chest. One more right and one more left. Come back to the center, roll yourself up. You can lose your straps, put them away. We're gonna make a few changes. The first change is I want you to move your box to short box position. The second thing I want you to do is put the ring 
just beside you, somewhere on the foot bar or somewhere that you can reach it in, in a little bit. And then the final change is take your weight to one heavy, for me that's a red, and one yellow, for me that is a light. So I have a heavy and a light spring on the machine. Put your hands on the box, come and stand onto the carriage facing your box. Your right ball of the foot's gonna go up against the foot bar. You're gonna bend your knees nice and deep, but keep your chest lifted, your spine's nice and flat like a table. You're gonna push the carriage all the way out with the right leg and then resist, resist, resist back in. This is all about control, not letting the springs do the work. Your muscles are doing the work. It's pretty easy just to let the carriage fling back home it's a whole different story to control the motion back home. That's why in Pilates, we typically exhale when we come back because that's the exertion where you're controlling the weight. You are exerting yourself on the way out, but you're resisting the pull on the way back in. One more all the way out back in. Now take it halfway out and hold it. One inch pulses out and in and out and in. Just one inch out, one inch in, one inch out, one inch in. Go for three more and two and one. Go all the way out one more time to full extension and then bring it back in. Take that right leg, lift it back behind you. Make sure your hips are square. Left knee slightly bent. Lower the right leg towards the foot bar, keeping it straight, and then squeeze the bottom and lift. Lower the leg down, squeeze the bottom and lift. This is again an isolated movement. We're contracting the leg muscles, squeezing the muscles in towards the bone, squeezing the bottom as you lift. Three. And two. Hold your next one up. Keep the leg lifted. Take your left arm out to a T. Make sure your right knee has a little bend in it. Start to loosen up your grip on your right hand, maybe even bringing the right arm out to a T. Balancing for five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, keep the right leg straight, drop it straight down, straddling the foot bar, finding the gray surface and turning to the right. Pick up your ring. You wanna make sure your left foot is on the very side closest to the springs. Your right foot is on the stable surface. Bring the ring right to your sternum, relax your shoulders and pull your ribs in. Don't move the carriage, just take a big squat and reach the arms forward and then squeeze the elbows into the waist as you stand back up. I'm pushing the arms forward, squatting the hips back and then squeezing everything back in. Good. Still focusing on those lats with my ring. Now this is a little bit heavier than I would typically do my skating work. So just know if this is too much weight, you can always take that yellow spring off, which is your light spring. Hold the next one down and bend your elbows. Hug the elbows to your waist, push the left leg all the way out and back in. Now having said that, you may think this is easy and you need heavier weight. Again, listen to your body, do what feels good. Don't go past your edge. The next element we're gonna add is a twist. When you push out again, twist to your right in opposition and then come right back in. You're rotating to the right as you're pushing to the left. Keep sinking deep into your squat. Three. And two. One more. Come back to the center, straighten both legs. Keep your left leg straight the whole time. Bend your right leg and push the carriage out. Arms go forward, straighten both legs back in. Bend only the right leg and straighten everything back in. I just like to bring that arm, the arms with the ring right in front of me as a counterbalance. And I can focus on, as I reach my arms forward, I'm dropping my hips back. 
three. And two. One more to go. Good. Come all the way in. Set your ring back down. Let's change the weight right now. Take your yellow spring into the high position and take your red spring off. Your yellow is your light. So you have a light spring, but you have it on the button. If you want it even harder, go to your medium spring. Carefully turn to face the box. Turn your feet to the box. And then step your right foot onto the box. Your left hand is going to reach down for the strap. Your right elbow is connecting to your right knee. Lift your chest, roll your shoulders back. Start with a slow, steady, straight arm pull with your left arm. Now it's a balancing act here because if you put too much weight on, it's going to be too heavy for your arm. But if you don't put enough weight on, then you're going to move too quickly, get slack in your straps, and risk tumbling. So I always say move very slow with control in this position. Now this is a pretty safe position because I'm hinged forward. I'm connecting my right elbow to my knee. That's helping to support me. If you don't feel comfortable here, you can definitely have the hand on the box. You can have both feet back and be in a modified position. When your arm is back the next time, go into a tricep. I want to have at least something connecting to the box, though. I do like to be hinged forward. So you're either hinged forward with both feet on the carriage or you're hinged forward with the right foot on the box. <sighs> Keep lifting up and out of your sternum so you're not sagging, you're not dumping into that right arm. You're lifting out of that right arm. This will be your last one. Keep the strap in the hand, but set your hand down. If your right, right leg's on the box, put it back onto the carriage. Bring your right hand onto the box. Your left hand this time is going to do a straight arm pull and a little circle out and around to the side. For more challenge, your right leg is going to lift behind you and go above the foot bar to the back of the room. I'm trying to reach that right foot way back to the back of the room. I'm putting a little bend in my left leg. Good. Three to go. Three. And two. One more and you're done. We will not circle the other way. <laughs> take the foot down first. Take the strap down first. And let's change our weight. I'm going to, while I'm here, move my ring to the other side so I have it handy. Take it to one heavy red spring and the yellow, which is the light, spring back in the regular position. So one heavy, one light. Face your box again, second side, left ball of foot against the foot bar. Bend down in that little runner start, start, like you're getting ready to sprint across the room. Push out with the left leg, resist, resist, resist. Make sure that you're looking towards the tip of the nose. What tends to happen a lot here is you're looking up and tweaking the neck. You know, you want to see where you're going, but you want to look down to the box to keep your neck in a good alignment. Okay, make sure you're not putting too much pressure in the arms. That's why you're pushing your weight back into your hips. Your hands are just there for a little bit of balance, very light on the fingers. I want you to do one more all the way out and in. And then come halfway out for a round of pulses. Squeeze tiny. Just an inch. Just an inch. Three and two and one. Let's go all the way out one more time. Come back home and rest. Take your left leg behind the foot bar, reaching it to the back of the room. Squeeze the bottom to lift the leg. Lower the leg towards the foot bar. Squeeze and lift. My hips are completely square to the box. My shoulders are square to the box. Nice job. Three more, just a light isolated movement. Little bend in that right knee. Hold it up the next time. Right arm goes out to a T. If you can, left arm goes out to a T. Hello, shaky leg. Hold it for five, four, 
three, looking good, two, one, hands down, straddle the foot bar and put your left foot on the gray surface. Turn your toes to the side, your right foot's up against the very edge. If you changed your weight on the other side, make sure you're doing the same weight on this side. I didn't change my weight, I'm still on a heavy and a light. Hold the ring at your sternum, will not move the carriage for the first set. Bend into your squat, reach the arms forward, squeeze the elbows to the waist to come back in. Pressing out and squeezing back in. Good. Three more to go. Make the sure that weight's staying back in your heels. On your next one, I want you to hold it back, bend your elbows, hug the elbows to your waist, put the weight in your left leg, push out and in with the right. Now the fun thing about the foot bar here is if you need to hold on to the foot bar with your leg, as long as your foot bar is locking, it can give you a little support. One more and then I want you to start to twist in the opposite direction to the left. When you push right, twist left, push right, twist left. How low can you go? One more, come in and stand. Now the right leg stays straight. You bend the left leg, push the arms out, straighten the left leg. Arms go in opposition forward as you go back through the hips. Great work, three more to go. And two, and one. Good job, let's just set that ring down and change the weight right now. I'm taking the light spring, my yellow spring, and I'm putting it on the top button. I'm taking my heavy off. If this is not enough challenge, you can also go to medium. Take your hands on the box, turn to face your box. Carefully step your left foot up and onto the box. If this doesn't feel safe for you, keep the left foot on the carriage. Take your right hand and grab the, the strap. Left elbow definitely connected to your thigh. You're in a nice long lengthened hinge from your back. Straight arm press, slow and steady. If you come upright, you have a bigger chance of losing your balance. That's why I like you to be hinged forward. And if you don't feel good here, you have the hand for support and the foot goes back. You could even like bend your knees a little bit and take it to a little squat. The key is that you're moving slow. You're gonna get better workout if you move slow anyway, right? Last two. When your arm is back the next time, go into a tricep, bend your elbow and straighten your elbow. Good, keep that elbow as lifted as you can. Try to use your breath. And one more, good work. Keep the strap in the hand, put both hands down to the box, step your left foot down to the carriage. Nice long spine, the left arm is gonna be on the box for support. Your right arm's gonna push back straight and do a little circle out and around. Don't make it too big. If your circle goes too big, which means you go really forward of the box and do this big circle, you'll lose control. It's a very small circle focusing back. If you're ready, the left leg goes above the foot bar and you push it to the back of the room, reaching energy through that leg. Squeeze that leg with might. Three to go here. Right knee has a subtle bend in it. Last one here. Nice job. Take the left foot and put it down if it's lifted. Take the strap and put it down. Let's go ahead and sit facing the foot bar and change our weight. 
take it to a blue spring. For me, that's a medium weight spring. Take your ring, the ring of fire, and put it between your knees. Here we go, some inner thigh work. You get a two for one. We're gonna do some arms and inner thighs. Pick up your straps, put your elbows right down to your sides, palms up, roll the shoulders back, lift up and out of that, those sitting bones. Exhale to reach the arms forward and hold. Squeeze your ring, three, two, one. Bend your elbows, repeat. Exhale, press the arms forward and hold. Squeeze, 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 bend the elbows. Keep going. You may have heard me say it before, the inner thighs are the gateway to the core. And if we can get our inner thighs to connect, focus on the inner thighs. We can focus on those deep abdominal muscles. Three, two, one. Let's do one more. So squeezing not only the inner thighs, but you're pulling up on the pelvic floor. Hold the ring and hold the arms. Keep your ring squeezing. Turn your palms to face each other. Open the arms out like a, you're hugging a tree. Check your arms out. Make sure they're not way back and you're popping your ribs. You're holding your elbows in line with your shoulders. You're holding a big beach ball. Squeeze the ring. Three, two, one. Exhale, the arms close. Open the arms. Here we go. Round two. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Close the arms. Open, and three, two, one. Squeeze the arms, three more sets. We have one final exercise to do in this set. And then we'll give our arms, well, never mind. We're not giving our arms a break, but we'll switch positions. One more, arms go wide, squeeze the ring. Three, listen, two, hold the ring. Little circles the size of a tennis ball, tiny. Two more in this direction. Little circles the opposite direction. Six, five, make it small. Four, three, two, and one, and done. Put your right strap away. Keep your left strap and turn to your left. You're gonna sit in a mermaid position with your left leg in kind of a side saddle and your right knee towards the carriage. If this doesn't feel good for you, just sit with your feet in front on the small edge of the box. Take an inhale, you're sitting tall holding the ring and the strap. Exhale to turn your torso to the right and inhale back to the center. We're gonna do three different variations, each getting a little bit more challenging. And again, if this does not feel good for your back to be sitting in a mermaid like this, just sit with your feet in front of you on the very edge of the box and you're repeating the same thing that we're just doing. I like the mermaid, it just gives you a little bit of a stretch. <sighs> After one more, we're gonna do our first add-on. Next time you twist to the right, you're gonna stay there, hold, punch the arms out, bend them back in, and twist back to the center. It's a twist, a punch, back in, and center, good. Twist and punch, back in, and center. Two more, and then we have our final variation. One more. All right, listen, this will be our next variation. You'll twist first, punch out, hold it, and do a straight arm press all the way back to the center. Bend your arms and go again. Rotate, press, little circle back to the center. Bend the arms again. Rotate, press. Doesn't have to be big, but it needs to be controlled. Bend the arms. Rotate, straighten the arms, go all the way back. Last one here, bend the arms, rotate, straighten the arms, go all the way back. Put that strap away, straighten your right leg and put it, put it under the foot bar. If your foot bar locks, this is totally perfect. If your foot bar does not lock, grab your safety strap and put your foot in the safety strap. I'm gonna push up onto that foot bar. My right hip is lifted in air. I'm balancing on my left hip. I want you to go down into the well, squeeze the elbows into the sides and lift up. Go down into the well and lift up. This is just a different variation with your foot by the foot bar. If you feel more secure with it in the safety strap, you can definitely do that. I feel this is a little more challenging. 
because it's a little less stable. Three. And two. Hold your next one down. Little pulses up an inch, down an inch, up an inch, down an inch. If you're so inclined, take your arms over your head. I'm going to stay right here. This is enough for me today. Three, two, and one. Come all the way up. Bend that right leg. Put the ring onto the gray surface. Take your right hand on the foot bar. Take a stretch towards the foot bar first. Just taking a release of the left side. And then we will take a release to the other side. I'm going to straighten my right leg back out. You can take your elbow to the headrest if that feels comfortable and your arm's going to be reaching. I'm going to keep pushing my foot up against the foot bar for some resistance. I like to play around with where my body is. Sometimes I rotate up to the ceiling to feel a really nice stretch. Sometimes I rotate a little forward. Just find where the muscles need to release and hang out there. The second stretch, your right hand will go to the wood in front of you. The left hand will go to the wood behind you. And you can just drop your head, your neck, your shoulders. And give yourself a little moment. Because we are going to repeat that whole series on the other side. When you're ready, come up. Grab your ring along the way. Let's turn around. This time your right leg is in the mermaid. Your left leg is with your knee reaching towards the carriage. Again, if this does not work, sit with your legs on the small side of the box. Right hand has the strap. Left hand's holding the ring. Bring everything together. Lengthen your spine first. We'll start with our first variation, just twisting the torso left and then back to the center. Twisting left and back to the center. Two and one. Second variation, add a press. Twist first and hold. Punch the arms. Pull the arms back to bent. Rotate towards the center. Rotate. Push, bend, rotate back. Good. Really control the position, control the motion. We'll do one more, and then our final variation will be the most fun variation. You're going to rotate first, then punch, and do a circle all the way back with straight arms. Bend the arms, repeat again. Turn, punch, circle back. Bend and repeat. Turn, punch, circle back. Bend and repeat. Turn and punch, and circle back. Two more to go. Bend, turn. Punch and circle, last one here. Bend, turn, punch, and circle. Good. Put the strap away. This is where you can either get the safety strap out or put the left foot up against the foot bar. Lengthen your whole body. My left butt cheek's lifted. My right is taking all the weight. I'm leaning back as if there's an imaginary wall behind me, and I'm lifting up and back in. We did not put any weight on the carriage either, so that the other thing is the carriage is very unstable. So it's a little bit of a challenge in that way as well. Definitely not the traditional exercise, but you know me, I like to play around with things and add variety. But if this is not feeling good for you, put the foot under the safety strap. Put some extra springs on if you need more stability. <sighs> Two more up and down, and then we're going to hold it in the halfway point, here we go, take it and hold, little pulses, eight. If you want the arms over the head, go for it. Four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and set the ring down. Let's bend the left leg first and go into the mermaid stretch towards the foot bar. And then we'll go into the stretch towards the tower. Straighten your left leg back out. Come into your right elbow and reach your left arm over the, your head. The left leg can be pushing up against the foot bar for a little added resistance. You can rotate your torso up, down, 
this feels like a good line for me where I need that stretch. My lateral body's always so tight. That's why I like to do this exercise, basically to get to do this stretch. And then turn your body towards the floor and let everything release. When you're ready, walk yourself up. Come out of there, turn to face your tower. <laughs> I know if you don't have the tower, I always say the tower, but you're turning with your feet on the headrest. I'm gonna put my ring off to the side just so it's not in my way. Pick up the right loop. I have two loops. I like the little loop because it's gonna give me a little bit more resistance, a little less slack. My right thigh is gonna go in the little loop. If you only have one loop, you just may need a little more weight on the carriage. We are still on that medium spring, which was the blue. Scoot your bottom to the very front of the box. Take your hands to the back of the box for option one. Take your hands to the carriage for option two. Reach your right leg into tabletop, lift up and out of your chest so your arms are nice and long, elbows slightly bent, but we're not sagging down. You're lifting and bright. The right leg's gonna reach long towards the wall in front of you and then pull it back to tabletop. Reach and extend it long and then back to tabletop. Your fingers can point towards your box. If you have a little bit more open shoulders, they can point out to the sides. If you have even more open shoulders, they can point to the foot bar. It's really personal preference. You're gonna get the most stretch with the fingers facing the foot bar for sure. Two more, but that's not accessible to everyone, so it doesn't mean you need to be there. Hold the left right leg bent. Take your left arm and lift it up. If this does not feel good for you, keep it down. Turn to the right and reach the left arm on the outside of the right knee. You can do this whole thing with the left hand down. Pulse the right knee in towards the arm and back. So if you're doing it down, you're just pulsing the knee in towards your body. <sighs> Good, three, two, and one. Nice, come back to the center, set the foot down, and help yourself all the way up. Second side, put that strap off and put it back onto the peg. Grab your left strap, remember I'm using my little loop. My legs are going to be, or my bottom's gonna be at the front edge of the box, hands can be on the back edge of the box or all the way down to the carriage left leg and tabletop, lift up and out of your shoulders, and let's start going out and in with your left leg. Remember, just play around with your shoulders, positions of the fingers, fingers towards the foot bar, a lot more openness in the shoulders, fingers forward, doesn't require as much, they're all great positions. <sighs> Whatever works for your body. Last three, <sighs> and two, one more time and hold. Remember you can keep the hand down and just do a little twist to the side or you can reach the right arm up and then bring it on the outside of your left knee. Pulse it one inch in and one inch out. One inch in and one inch out. You know how I love these abs. Really, really good. Last four and three, two. You've got it one more time. Good work, set the foot down, put the hand down, walk your hands forward, take the strap off. We're done with that, step off the machine. Nothing's gonna change except you're going to put your foot bar down. And I'm putting my ring off to the side because I don't need that either. Foot bar in the down position, push your carriage out. And I have my blue spring, I like to keep it in the middle, mainly because for these exercises, my blue spring is in the very middle and I'm going to straddle it. If your blue spring is anywhere off to the side, which is your medium spring, it might be a little bit different. You're just straddling that spring wherever it is. Bend your knees, push your hips back, put your elbows down like they're angling towards the floor. Take your right leg and lift it so that you can put your right foot up against the wood behind you. First variation, we're gonna push with both arms, pushing that carriage away. Again, make sure your elbows aren't lifting up to the side. That's gonna put a lot of pressure in the neck. You wanna put the elbows down towards the floor. It's gonna work those guns. Get your arms nice and toned. Three, 
three more, and two. One more. Second variation, take your left hand behind your back. Just keep pushing with your right arm. A little bit more challenging. If you need your left hand back on the box for a little assistant, that's fine. Just push mainly through the right and use the left for a little help. Third and final variation, put both hands back on the box, send your right leg behind you, and then bend and straighten both arms. Now I should have said there is one more variation because we're going to stay just where we are with the leg and only push with the right arm, left hand to your hip. So really four variations, but we're just doing three sets. So either both hands pushing or one hand pushing. This is why my triceps have been on fire the last few days I've been doing this workout. Three, two, and one. Both hands to the box, step your right foot to the floor, put your left foot up against the wood of the reformer, bend your knees, elbows bend to the floor, round two, press the arms and bend the arms. This is where you can stay the whole time. You could actually keep both feet on the floor. I haven't taught this class or this exercise in a class in a while, but I really enjoy it. Thought it'd be good to bring it back out. Second set, this time you'll be pushing with your left arm. Right hand can go to the hip. Again, if you need that right hand for a little help, just put a finger or two on the box. Two more. Third variation, both hands back to the box, lift your left leg behind you, square the hips and just start pressing out and in through both arms. Right into the option B, left arm only, right hand to the hip, the whole enchilada. Three, two, and one. How I like to get out of here, both hands to the box, Put the knee that's lifted onto the carriage and put that same foot onto the wood. That holds the carriage still and then you can carefully step out of the well and put both knees on. Grab your ring if it's handy. You might have to take a little step off the machine. This will be a little tricky to get the ring in place. So if it doesn't work or you don't have a friend nearby, you might need to emit the ring. Let's lay on our belly first. You want to have your bra line at the front of the box or for gentlemen, just where you wear your heart rate monitor right across the chest. I want you to bend the knees, reach back and place that ring right at your ankles. Once you've got the ring there, you might want to situate, I'm going to move forward just a smidge. We're going to reach those legs long behind you. Already, this is going to be a challenge because we're on the short box. Walk yourself forward. If you have the tower, grab it. If not, grab your risers. All right, lift your sternum just a little, roll your shoulders back, push your pubic bone down, reach those legs long, give that ring a little hug. Here's our variation. You're gonna bend your arms and hold. Squeeze the ring three, two, one, straighten the arms, do it again. Bend the arms, hold, squeeze three, two, one, straighten the arms, and again, you're holding I might have to name this class BOGO. There's a lot of BOGOs. Actually, when I said that today, when I was teaching this, they were saying, this is more than a BOGO. This is like a three for one. Everything's working. Good, two more. Last one, keep those legs long, keep squeezing. Now hold the ring, take the left hand either to the headrest to the box or behind the back. Your right arm only is going to pull. Remember, if you need your left arm for assistance, bring it back and use it a little bit with the left arm, focusing mainly on the right. Don't, use, don't lose your legs, keep squeezing. After eight of them, I want you to switch and do the left. Right hand can be on the headrest, that's a little easier, on the box or behind the back. Three, two, 
three to go and two. One more. Hold on with both hands. Bend your elbows and hold. Take your legs, lift them up an inch and down an inch. Squeeze. The more you push your pubic bone down, that's going to help keep your back in a nice safe position. It's not a big lift, just a little lift, a little tiny lift. <sighs> keep lifting your sternum. Three and two. Last grand finale. One, hold it. Bend your knees, flex your feet, make a footprint up to the ceiling and down, up to the ceiling and down. For some people, this may be too much. Take the ring away. Just do it without. Good. Three. Two. One. And done. You can actually just let the ring go. Hopefully it doesn't do any damage. You're going to relax your head, your neck, your shoulders. Usually if I'm teaching this, I would grab the ring for everyone, but I'm alone, so... I don't have anyone here. My son's here, but I don't think he's going to run in here and grab my ring. I think it's okay. You're going to let your head, your neck, your shoulders relax. I can feel it. Maybe I can grab with my feet. <laughs> oh, good. I'll just throw it out. <laughs> and you'll go ahead and release. Maybe it wasn't a good idea to just drop it. Okay. Let's come back. Set your knees on the carriage. Put your elbows on the box. After all that extension, it's so good to do some flexion. Your back needs it. It wants it. You can do a little movement with your flexion or just hold it. Well, we have made it to the portion of class where we get to lay down. That's a good thing, right? Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It just means we're laying down. Okay, let's come up and take the box to the side. You're done with the box for good. I had a request to add this exercise that I haven't really done in a lot of workouts to add it um, back in here. So we're going to be doing our declining weight bridges. I've been teaching this all week. Take it to two heavy red springs and a medium blue spring. So I have two heavy reds and a medium blue. Have your ring handy. We're going to use that later on. Perhaps you might already be too tired. We'll see. Or I might be too tired. Let's go ahead and lay down. You guys probably aren't tired at all, right? All right, we're going to put our heels on the bar, arms reaching to the side. Have your head flat for this one. Your feet are hips distance apart. I want you to roll your spine all the way up and hold your bridge. Eight times, you're going to push all the way out and bring it back in. Heavy weight just means it's going to be harder to push. It's going to come in pretty easy. As we keep lowering the weight down and down and down and down and down, that's going to change. And what's cool about this is what's going to change also is which muscles have to work. Right now, a lot of glutes, a lot of quadriceps. That's not going to be the case when we finish. Now, if you've done eight already, I want you to come in, roll down. Now, you're going to have to come up since you're alone, unless you've got a friend to change your weights. Two ways to come up. You can just roll up. We're going to take the fancy way, which is a Pilates roll-up. Reach the arms over the head. You're going to pull those legs, push them into the foot bar. Nod the chin. Roll your spine up one vertebrae at a time and come up. Take off your blue medium spring. You should be left with two heavy springs. Either come down or go right into your roll down. Now, if the roll up was too hard, sometimes you can just, I just do the roll down instead. So you can come up and then do the roll down portion. Arms to the sides, heels on the foot bar, round two, roll the hips up and push out and back in. You guys actually get extra bonus work since I'm not there to, to change your springs for you. Get that extra ab work here. It's always good to get extra ab work. You may not feel the difference yet, but it's coming. This will be one more out and in. And when you come into the bumper, hold it, roll those hips down. Again, roll up, just coming up and off the machine or doing an official Pilates roll up. Try not to use the legs as much as you can. Take it down to one red and one blue. So I have one heavy and one medium. Arms in front of you, roll your spine slowly, slowly, slowly back down. Arms to the side, heels on, sits bones distance apart. Round three, lift your hips up, 
push out and in. This is when I start to feel the change shifting. Now I'm going to think of pulling into the bumper more using my hamstrings to squeeze the carriage in. Good, two more and one more. Lower the hips down, take a roll up however you need to to come up and switch the weight. Take off your blue spring, you should be left with one heavy spring only. Roll yourself all the way down, down, down. Arms to the side, heels on, roll your hips up very carefully out and in. Now, not everyone is gonna wanna go lower than this. This may be the lowest weight you wanna go. I'm gonna take it all the way through the springs till the, no, there's no springs left. You do not have to go with me. Especially if you start to feel this in the back, really tuck your tailbone, go a little bit lower, go a little bit smaller. Next time you're in, lower your hips, legs over the foot bar, roll yourself all the way up. This time you're on a blue spring, which is a medium, so find your medium spring. Arms in front of you, roll yourself down. I find with the blue spring, I've got to change my foot position. I'm gonna take the pinky, pinky toe side of my foot and take it on top of the foot bar and push down into it. Then I'll lift my hips. Test the waters. Maybe you go an inch, maybe you go all the way out, and then you're using more of those side bottom muscles to pull in. If you're not wanting to come with me to this lighter weight, you could do the foot position at the heavier high spring, that heavy spring. Or you can work your ladder back up to the higher weights. So instead of continuing to go down, you might just continue to go back up. Good, so you can keep following along, but do what is most comfortable for you. I want you to do two more and one more. Very carefully come in, lower the hips, bring the feet over the foot bar, roll yourself up one vertebrae at a time or just come up. Take it to your lightest spring that you have on your machine, take the other spring off. I am now on my light yellow spring. I'm gonna very carefully put my feet on top, push down on the pinky toe side of my foot, lift my hips, test your water. Maybe you go an inch, maybe you go all the way out. It is very, very light. Your carriage is going to move easy out. That's not the hard part. The hard part is keeping your feet on the foot bar and pulling in. Try to kiss the bumper when you come in. <sighs> Two more to go. <sighs> now remember, this is not for everyone, so if you want, you're adding weight and going back up to where we started. Lower the hips, take the feet over the foot bar, arms to the ceiling if you're doing your traditional roll up. This is our third and, not third, <laughs> our final one. We've done way more than three, right? Take the springs all the way off. We're going to no man's land. Let's go all the way down. Do not do this if you do not feel comfortable with it. There is nothing holding you into the foot bar. Pinky fing toe side of the foot on the top, lift the hips, and we're going out and coming in. Just a little kiss. That was a big kiss. <laughs> Three to go. And two, I've decided we are gonna use our ring, but it's gonna be a yummy, yummy, yummy thing. And then lower the hips down. Take your feet over the foot bar. You gotta kinda hold yourself in if you're on those no springs. Arms to the ceiling, roll yourself up. And then everyone come to one heavy red and one medium blue. Grab your ring, bring it in front of you, and let's roll it all the way down, down, down. Awesome work. Okay, take your feet to the ceiling, put your feet into the ring, and give your legs a stretch for your hamstrings. That was amazing. You all did great. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm excited because I've got a lot of amazing requests that everyone's been sending in. So I definitely, it does take me a while because I have usually a running tally of 20 plus <laughs> requests. 
but don't worry if you put one in I will get to it and if you put it in a long time ago I'm sorry I may have forgot so just remind me all right just a little bit of circles go ahead and put that ring away we'll go ahead and grab for the straps put the straps on the feet I want you to take those legs up to the ceiling Drop your tailbone, arms reaching to the sides. Keep your head rest flat. We are going to do a little short spine. I want you to take your legs down, down, down. Open them at the bottom and do a nice big circle out and around. We did quite a bit of inner thigh work. So we want to just make sure that we're giving those inner thighs a little stretch. Start to feel your heart rate slow down, just tuning back into your body. Big deep inhales and exhales. After one more circle, when you get to the top, go ahead and reverse your direction, starting with your legs going wide to begin with, pulling down and together at the bottom, and then come right back up the middle. And go out and around and down and right back up the middle. Three more. After one more, we'll make sure your headrest should be flat. If not, go ahead and bring it down. Lift your legs up to the ceiling. Let the straps pull your hips up. Just go as high as comfortable. You might just go an inch and that's fine. With the full sh um, short spine, you'll actually let the carriage dock. I like to push my hands into the carriage, lift my legs up and get a big stretch. I even got a little pop in my back, which felt really good. Bend your knees in towards your chest. Now, if your legs are really high, you can come into turnout. That's the traditional way where your heels are together, your feet are wide, toes are wide, knees wide. That way, if your hips are high, you have some room there. Roll your hips away from your heels. Straighten the legs as much as you can. That's another nice little hamstring stretch. Bend your heels back to your bottom. Push the legs long and turn the toes back to parallel. Let's do that again. You inhale the legs up. You roll the hips up. The carriage will come all the way to the docker, to the docked into the stopper. Your heels will be together, toes apart. Bend your knees to the shoulder blocks. Lift your hips, push into your arms. Draw your chin away from your chest. Oh, feels so good. Roll your back down, hips away from the heels. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Now pull the heels to the hips and then push your legs away. Bring your feet to spin together. Two more times, lift the legs on the inhale, roll the hips up on the exhale, dock the carriage, turn the toes out, bend the knees towards the shoulder blocks, lift even higher through the hips, roll the hips down, 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 bring the heels back to the hips, and push the legs long. Spin the toes together one more time. The legs go up and then the hips go up. Externally rotate, bend the knees, lift the hips even higher if that feels good. Roll the hips down, bend the knees, push the legs long, back to parallel. Bring the knees into the chest, take the straps off and put them back on the pegs. Give yourself a nice little hug and then we're gonna roll off the machine. Okay, watch your ring. We'll put that off to the side. Put your only one heavy red on, take your medium spring off, so you're left with one heavy. Hands on the foot bar, right knee on the carriage, left foot on the floor. Just push out into a nice ease lunge. I finally, after what, almost two years of filming, I 
have a little timer. <laughs> Instead of looking at my clock trying to figure out, okay, has it been an hour? Has it been 58 minutes? So hopefully, I try to, you know, do as close to 60 as I can. And let's come up. This one, by, I think, is going to be one minute over, but that's okay. You get an extra bonus minute of stretch. Over, over to the other side, and we'll go all the way out. It's amazing what you can buy on Amazon. Anything and everything. Nice job. Okay, everyone, you've made it through another workout. Awesome job as always. If you've got comments, questions, let me know. Otherwise, I hope to work out with you soon. Have a great day.